Hello, everyone, and welcome to the St. Louis Four School Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. There's a Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to ask questions to our presenters at any time. And if you do have a question for a specific college, make sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, and this presentation is being recorded. It will also be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first institution, which is University of Oregon. All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Olivia Manwin. I'm a regional admissions counselor for the University of Oregon. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about where the University of Oregon is located, our demographics, some of the programs that we offer and the admissions process. I know we don't have a lot of time today, so my contact information will be in the chat um, and you will be able to follow up with me afterwards if you have any questions. The University of Oregon is located in Eugene, Oregon, which is um, located, we are the second largest city in the state of uh, Portland, or the state of Oregon. You can visit us by flying into Portland or into Eugene um, and you can, we are essentially located, we're about an hour from the Cascade Mountains and an hour from the coast, and we're a public liberal arts research institution. This is our beautiful campus. We've been rated number one as a green city based on factors such as our air quality, recycling, transportation, um, et cetera. A very bike friendly campus, and we're a leader in sustainability, which is a common thread throughout our campus. It takes about 15 minutes to walk from one end of our campus to the other, and our campus is an arboretum, which is just a fancy way of saying a museum of tree. We have over 5,000 trees on our campus. Our campus demographics, we have, we're very undergraduate heavy. We have about 19,000 undergraduate students and only around 4,000 graduate students. We like to call ourselves a Goldilocks institution, meaning we're not too big and not too small. So you can get those big school things like all of our sports and uh, you get the small school feel with our school, our small school um, 16 to one teacher student ratio. We also are a tier one national public research institution. And this is something that we are very proud of. We're part of the AAU, which is the Association of American Universities. And this is something we're so proud of because being a research university matters. The amount of work that we do um, impacts and makes a difference in areas such as health, medicine, economics, national security, et cetera. Students at the University of Oregon get the opportunity to get involved in a lot of research on campus. And as you see, 73% of our students are involved in research. We have 160 academic programs to choose from. And if you are unsure of what you want to major in, that's absolutely okay. A lot of students come in exploring is what we call it. Um, and I'll just give you a highlight of some of the programs that we do have. Our College of Arts and Sciences is the biggest and about 60% of our students are in this college. Other programs that we're known for are, are it's the College uh, Lundquist College of Business, which is a top 10 nationally among public institutions. Um, our College of Design has a very strong um, architecture program that focuses on sustainability. And we have a honors college, that's honors college, and they have a unique program called three plus three, where you're able to do three years in undergraduate and then three years in graduate school. So you're able to get your three years undergraduate degree and then three years in the law school and get your law degree. So it's a pretty cool program. We really encourage our students to get involved outside of the classroom in one of those ways is studying abroad. We have more than 300 study abroad programs at the University of Oregon to choose from. You can search by location if you know you really want to go to a place like Ireland, or you can search by program if you know that you really want to stud, uh, study some type of medicine. So whether you want to shadow a hospital in Ghana or an artist in Greece, we have a program that fits everyone. We also have over 300 clubs and organizations on our campus. As I mentioned, we are a division one athletic campus. So we do have a lot of sports to watch. My favorite thing to do is go to a duck game. Something we always yell when uh, we are at the stadium is it never rains in Austin Stadium. And of course it definitely rains, but our energy is so big and so positive that um, if you were in there with us, you wouldn't feel it. We like to say it doesn't rain, we don't feel it. Uh, we do have a housing requirement for students to live on campus. We have 10 different residential halls for students to choose from, and you're able to go into our website and just kind of take a look at all of those different halls. Here are a few of our top employers. I'm sure that you have heard of a few of them. We wanna make sure that we set up our students for success, whether that's graduate school, law school, medical school, or into their first or forever career. 
getting into our application process, our admission requirements are straightforward. If you know that you do not meet some of these standard requirements here and you are a junior or before junior, you wanna make sure that you work with your high school counselor and make sure that you make up those classes senior year or you're welcome to sit up a meeting with me and talk about the requirements in our alternative admission process. Things that we consider is more than just your GPA, we do take a holistic approach. So we're also looking at your grade trends, um, freshman year all the way to your senior year. Um, and we are a test optional institution, so you do not need to send those to us. Our early action deadline is coming up on November 1st next year, so um, you'll hear by December, but it's non-binding. And we do have some scholarships for students in the Oregon Guarantee, which tells students that um, your tuition will not change from your freshman year to your senior year. Um, again, I know this is a very quick amount of time, so my information, I'll drop it here in the chat. If you have more questions, we can talk about it after this. And I believe I am at my time. So let me stop sharing my screen. Thank you, University of Oregon, for that presentation. Up next, we have Grand Canyon University. Here I am. It's good to share your screen and then cover that up so I couldn't see it. One second, let me go ahead and share. And Clarissa, if you can let me know if you're seeing it or not. Um, that look good, Clarissa? It does. Awesome. So hi, I'm Ellie Richards. I am the University Admissions Counselor for Grand Canyon University in, you guessed it, sunny Phoenix, Arizona. However, sadly, I am not in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. I'm actually in St. Louis. So I live in South County, St. Louis. Um, so I'd love to meet you all. I'm not too far from any of you. Um, I also will drop my information in the chat because um, I'd love to meet up with you. Um, your families get to know you more and hear more about your college search. Grand Canyon University, and I will talk fast because we only have a few minutes. Um, again, located in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. We were founded in 1949. It was a very small college of theology, but for the last dozen years, we really have grown like gangbusters. Our mission is to be the um, premier private um, college, that Christian college that is affordable in the country. Um, here's a little bit of a snapshot about us. Again, private, Christian, affordable. We have over 200 academic programs. Um, I'll, I'll go through some of those um, to make sure that you can see them. They'll be up on the slide. But everything from our College of Theology, College of Education, College of Nursing and Healthcare um, Sciences. We also have a great um, College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Anything that you can think of, we probably have it, or we're um, creating that major. Our majors really are founded on um, what the market drives um, because we are career forward, right? That's why people are really striving to go to college for a college education is to make sure that that leads to a career afterwards. Um, we are a, again, kind of like Oregon, that Goldilocks of a smaller, larger school. We are division one, but we only have 20, about 23,000 students on campus. Those are, um, our undergraduate numbers. Um, and we do not require students to live on campus, but the majority of them do decide to live on campus. I think it's because we provide such great dorms, swimming pools, palm trees, you gotta love the weather as well. Um, let's see, here's just a like, kind of a broad overview of our colleges um, and some of our majors as well. Like I said, business, medicine, nursing, engineering and technology. But what you probably wanna know is why GCU? GCU um, is, is known for being really great with hands-on education. And what does that mean? Well, that means whatever your major is, whatever bells or whistles or, to or toys that come with it, we want you to have hands-on learning. So that means if you come and study engineering, you don't have to wait until you're an upperclassman to get experience in our labs. Same with nursing. We have a nursing simulation lab that really looks like a hospital if you were in there. Um, we provide lots of great internship opportunities and opportunities to network with our professors and others so that you really not only learn in the classroom, but learn outside of it as well. 
Our faculty are there to teach. We are a teaching institution and we really believe in affecting change on campus brought back, um, brought forth by students. So that means um, that lots of things change on campus in terms of clubs and, and involvement, even including getting a Panera on campus because it's what students want. Um, we're proud that we offer the same tuition for any student in state or out of state, and we have not raised our tuition. This will be going into our 13th year. We have had a tuition freeze, and our president has said that he doesn't plan on raising it anytime soon, and our application is free. Um, our Honors College is also free. This is an opportunity for students to get additional um, opportunities for faculty mentoring, research, um, additional honors distinction on your diploma um, and some other benefits as well. But uh, we are proud to offer this to students who qualify for a certain GPA for free. Um, you can also apply to be a part of the Honors College. We do, along with our Division I athletics, offer a number of club sports. So if you're not at the D1 level but still want to compete in college, here's a list of some of our club sports. We are very involved on campus, not just with our um, sports and other activities, but student clubs, over 300 of them on campus because we like to serve our students. So if there's something that you're involved in um, now that you wanna continue in college, uh, but we, and we don't currently have a club, you certainly can start a club on campus. Again, these are some of our Division I um, athletics. Uh, it might have been heard, and maybe you've known this, that we like to think of ourselves and our Division I basketball team as the largest party in college basketball. Our arena goes crazy. We are the antelopes, so we always like to say lopes up. Um, it's a really great experience. So even if you're not into playing it, it's really cool to get to cheer on a Division I um, sports team college um, when you're in college and really get to be amped up with that excitement. You can see here um, part of our campus. Yes, we are in, like I said, sunny Arizona. So you do get to take advantage of um, that weather, something nice like kind of studying by one of our three soon to be four swimming pools on campus. We do have updated dorms and apartments. Um, all of them are located near one of our athletic facilities on campus and a number of eateries as well. So um, we'd love to get you to campus um, and I'll talk about that in a second. This gives you a little bit of an overview. Like I said, our tuition has been frozen going into our 13th year. It's 16,500. Um, here's a uh, kind of an idea of what fees are, what room and board is and other books and supplies. The average cost around 25 because we do have some pretty amazing automatic scholarships uh, merit-based for students. This will let you know what that is. These are based on your GPA, your ACT or SAT. Tests are optional, but we do award scholarships based on the highest amount. So if you have a lower GPA, but a higher SAT or ACT score, we'll honor that um, with the scholarship that is the highest. That SCCSC, some of those students um, at, at some of the schools that I'm talking about might be part of our partnership. There are additional scholarships for those who are partners. And I will end by saying um, we do have free trips to campus. So these are for students who qualify. Um, it's called Discover GCU. Students who are admissible um, would qualify to attend a free trip to campus. So I will drop my information in the chat so that you can learn more about that, but we'd love to get you to campus so that you can really see if GCU is a right fit for you or not. Thank you so much for that presentation. As a reminder for our attendees, if you do have questions, definitely don't hesitate to put those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have Northern Arizona University. All right, good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing great. Alrighty, so my name is Lauren Rosales. I serve as your admissions representative at Northern Arizona University. I'm actually based in Flagstaff. So if you are making your way to Flagstaff, um, where we are located, um, you're welcome to sit down with me um, while you were on campus. Um, I actually graduated from NAU and was an out-of-state student, so I know that the process can be intimidating uh, looking at going far away from home, but I am here to help. So NAU is located in Flagstaff, which is about two hours north of Phoenix. We are in the largest uh, ponderosa pine forest in the country at an elevation of 7,000 feet. And we do get all four seasons, including about 100 inches of snow annually. So if you thought Arizona was just hot desert, Flagstaff is definitely the opposite of that. 
Um, we also do have a great city life. Um, the city of Flagstaff has a permanent population of about 75,000. So we have that small college town feel, but those big city amenities, as I like to say. Um, in the surrounding area, the Grand Canyon is about an hour and a half away. We're within a three hour drive to 11 National Parks and Monuments. Um, and because we are very outdoor oriented, um, there's so many things for you to do year round. So if you want to go kayaking, skiing and snowboarding, you can definitely do that while in Flagstaff. NAU began as a teaching college in 1899, and we've grown significantly since then. We have about 21,000 undergraduate students on our main campus in Flagstaff, and about 40% of our students are coming from outside of Arizona. So you'll be able to meet people from the Midwest or from across the country and even across the world. We are very undergraduate focused, and we have nearly 100 majors to choose from. Some of our popular options include psychological sciences, nursing, biomedical science, engineering, education, business, and forestry. But of course, we have many um, that you can choose from. We also do have accelerated master's programs where you can get both your bachelor's and your master's degree in as little as five years. Um, so if you are already thinking about going and getting your master's, NAU definitely has some great options for you. We also have a lot of research opportunities. So if you're wanting to um, apply yourself outside of the classroom, research might be a great way for you to do that. Student life is super important and we do have a very active student life. We have 22 residence halls on campus, 11 of them specific for first year students. We do not require students to live on campus their first year, but it is highly recommended and we actually house you with others in your same academic area. So if you're an accounting student, for instance, um, you'll be surrounded by other students that are also under the College of Business. We do have two all you care to eat dining facilities, 25 retail locations, over 400 different clubs and organizations. So there's always things for you to do around campus. We do also have um, our D1 athletics. So we have 15 NCAA division one teams. We play in the Big Sky Conference for all of our sports, except for women swim and dive, they are in the Western Athletic Conference. We wanna make sure that you're well supported. So we have a lot of different offices dedicated to helping you out. Um, we have our Office of First Generation Programs. About half of our students identify as first generation college students. Um, we recently became a Hispanic serving institution with 25% of our students identifying as Hispanic. We have over 115 Native American tribes on campus. We do have study abroad options. So if you're wanting to go abroad, you can definitely do that and maybe even take your scholarships with you. Now, looking at admissions requirements, we're looking at the 16 college preparatory classes. These are your four years of English, four years of math, three years of a lab science, two years of a social science, two years of the same second language, and one year of a fine art or a CTE. We are a test score optional school, so if you don't have SAT or ACT scores, that is okay. Um, if you have a minimum 2.5 unweighted core GPA, you'll be considered for admissions. If you have a 3.0 or higher and you're on track to complete all these classes, you will be guaranteed admissions into the university. We do have merit-based scholarships that we will automatically consider you for when you are admitted to the university. You're typically notified about a uh, about a month after you've been admitted. Um, and we're looking at those same 16 core classes. So at least uh, if you have at least a minimum 3.0 unweighted core GPA, you'll receive one of our two um, merit-based scholarships. Um, and then we do have additional scholarship opportunities on our website as well that you can stack with either of these awards. So looking at next steps for admissions, um, we ask that you self-report your grades. So it'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to complete your application. We don't require essay questions, letters of recommendation, anything like that. We are just really looking at those core classes. Our application for the upcoming school year, so fall 2022, um, will open in July. So you can apply over the summer. And then I do encourage you to consider our Honors College. Um, that's a great way for you to get a unique learning experience um, while fulfilling some of the requirements for your degree. There is a separate application for the Honors College and they will be looking at you more holistically. You do need to be admitted to NAU first. The Honors application typically opens in September. Now, there are a lot of great ways for you to connect with us. Attending sessions like this is great, um, but if you do want to learn more about NAU in longer than six minutes, um, definitely uh, join us for one of our daily campus presentations. These are happening virtual right now um, throughout the week, but we are also accommodating small in-person tours. Um, feel free to email me and I'll drop my information into the chat, um, but if you are coming to Flagstaff, definitely meet with us. We want to sit down and talk to you um, and uh, help determine if NAU is a good fit for you. Um, we also do have a very active 
YouTube channel with great um, student videos um, and some great information there. And then of course, follow us on social media. Our Instagram will have current NAU students take over our Instagram. So it's a great way for you to learn more about the university and becoming a lumberjack. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, um, but thank you so much. And I will pass it off to uh, Emily at University of Arizona. Thank you so much for your presentation. And as Lauren mentioned, yes, University of Arizona is up next. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here today to learn more about our different schools. My name is Emily Martinez and I am the admissions representative for the Midwest for the University of Arizona. Um, and I'm just gonna jump right in. The University of Arizona was founded in 1885. Actually, when Arizona was still just a territory, wasn't even a state yet. We have a long history, a long legacy. Um, our main campus is located in Tucson, Arizona. Since 1885, we've definitely grown. We now have a beautiful one square mile campus. Within that square mile, you'll have access to everything you need as a student from 23 dorms, over 35 restaurants, a movie theater, two recreation centers, and even a post office. Everything you need is just a quick walk away. And for those of you who like to ride your bike, our campus is super flat and Tucson is extremely bike friendly. We have about 35,000 undergraduate students making up our community. And uh, if you add in another 10,000, that would be our graduate students. So we have just over 45,000 total students. We do have a diverse student body. Over 40% of our students coming come from out of state. In fact, we have students coming from every single state in the US. We even have students coming from over 120 different countries. Even though we are a larger university, we're still able to offer a very personal educational experience. Class sizes average between 20 and 29 students and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. But there are tons of advantages to being in a large public university of our size. With over 250 program options, we literally have just about any program to meet your educational needs. Some of our more popular programs include our nationally top 20 ranked public business college, our nationally recognized uh, engineering programs, uh, as well as our pre-health and medical science programs. University of Arizona has two medical schools, so we have access to a lot of really great resources. We're also very well known for our fine arts and dance programs. Our dance program is one of the most competitive in the entire country. So spanning all disciplines, all uh, fields, we have a lot of really great program options. Within those program options, we offer big time opportunities. Um, we are a top tier world class institution ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world. Arizona is our premier tier one research one institution and a member um, of the prestigious Association of American Universities. This is an exclusive club of about 65 colleges and universities um, from Harvard to Yale to UC Berkeley to the University of Arizona. And it's because we focus on providing research opportunities for students. So of course, research is definitely a big opportunity, but we also have countless um, opportunities for internships, study abroad, service learning, and much more. So not only do we have countless academic opportunities, we also have a very active student life. Um, we have over 600 different student-led clubs and organizations to participate in, and they range from academic focus to special interest to student government and leadership to sorority and fraternity life to athletics and recreation and everything in between. My favorite student club to always point out is Zona Zoo. It is the official student section for our Division I Arizona Athletics, and it has been, it has been consistently ranked by, by ESPN as the biggest, loudest, and best student section in the Pac-12 Conference. Arizona is a Division I school for our athletics. Go Wildcats. Another great way to get involved is to live on campus. We do not have any housing requirements for first year students or really any year students. Living on campus is completely optional, though more than 75% of first year students do choose to live on campus. And if you do choose to live on campus, you also get to choose where. We do not have any housing restrictions and you get the complete freedom and flexibility in choosing where you wanna live. We have 23 different dorms that offer different styles, features, amenities. And again, you get to make the choice of where you'd like to live. Tucson is very much a college town. It offers a great art scene, electric shops, coffee spots, restaurants, concerts, festivals, and much more. My favorite thing to always point, about, point out about Tucson, especially being in the Midwest, is the gorgeous weather. It's a yearly average temperature of 83 degrees and over 300 days of sunshine. What's not to like about that? 
if you do decide you're interested in applying to Arizona, this is what you need to know. Um, similar to what was described earlier, we are looking for those core courses, those 16 core courses to ensure that you've completed by the time you um, graduate from high school. We're also going to use the grades earned from those courses to calculate your core GPA. That core GPA is going to be used to determine your admissibility to the school as well as, as, well as any other scholarship information. So outside of that, we do not require essays, personal statements are optional, recommend let they should, recommendation letters are not considered, don't bother submitting them, and we are also test optional. We also offer merit scholarships for our students. Out-of-state students can receive up to $35,000 per year for a total of four years. There is no separate application. You are automatically considered when you apply to the university. For this current application cycle and for fall 2022, we are completely test optional for merit scholarships. Um, so again, no separate application, you're automatically considered. So we know that was a lot of information thrown at you really quick. So if you'd like to connect with us and learn a lot more, um, dive deeper into the University of Arizona, I invite you to check us out online. We have a variety of different virtual uh, visit options, whether you're taking a guided tour, checking out our YouTube library, you can visit it and see it all right there. Um, so thank you again. I will drop my uh, contact information in the chat and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thank you so much for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is Arizona State University. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is David Mills. I am the assistant director. Uh, we're one of our assistant director of admission. Um, David, sorry to interrupt, but we see your timer at the moment. Well, that's not supposed to happen. How about now? There you go. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, try this again. Hey everyone, my name is David Mills. Uh, I'm our Assistant Director of Admission at ASU. Um, I work exclusively with students from the state of Missouri. Uh, so I am your go-to contact uh, if you're interested in learning more about Arizona State University. Uh, and I will drop this information in the chat uh, at the end of my presentation as well. Um, ASU is located in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, what you see on screen right now uh, is our charter. Uh, this is our mission, our values. This really drives everything that we do at ASU. Um, I think this is really critical, especially in a, a world of higher education today where a lot of colleges and universities are very competitive and very selective to get into. Um, as a public university, ASU is proud uh, to be working towards the opposite. Uh, we still obviously want to give you an amazing and a quality college experience, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but we want to make sure that we are inclusive and accessible uh, to the public as a public university. Um, and then, of course, we're helping you be successful, not just during your time at ASU, but after as well. Um, and we see uh, that in many ways. Um, one of the ways in which we are accessible um, is we have uh, assured admission requirements. You heard a little bit about this from the University of Arizona, from Northern Arizona University tonight. Um, but basically, if you meet the admission requirements at ASU, you are automatically accepted to Arizona State University. Uh, some majors have higher requirements, but if you meet those higher requirements, you're still automatically admitted direct entry into all those programs. Now, um, please know that um, for campus size, um, we are one of the biggest schools in the country. And I think that is amazing for diversity um, and for opportunities, but we never want it to impact you negatively from an academic standpoint. Uh, even though we have nearly 75,000 students, um, we have um, a fantastic student to faculty ratio, uh, 18 to one, uh, which is, is fantastic. We guarantee you the classes you need to graduate in four years. Um, and again, coming with the big, uh, big university opportunities, you have over um, 350 majors to choose from, over a thousand clubs and organizations to be a part of. Um, we have, uh, we're also a big research one institution, a top tier research institution. Uh, we're Pac-12 for our athletics as well. So you have that school spirit, that excitement, that game day uh, experience. Uh, you cannot do everything at ASU, but it's big enough and has the options and opportunities for you to customize your college experience to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, we also have the diversity of students. You can see there uh, a large number of our students come from underrepresented populations. Uh, we have geographic diversity, as mentioned as well, uh, with all 50 states and about 136 countries around the world represented at ASU. Um, it really is um, a, a place you will go to meet all different types of people from all different walks of life. 
Uh, so we want the diversity and the opportunities, but we never want it to impact you negatively. And we have the resources and the space available to make sure that is a reality uh, for you. Um, you can see here on our screen, um, again, being successful, not just during your time at ASU, but after you leave. Uh, last year, 89% of our students had a job within 90 days of graduating. And I think that's really reflective of uh, the experience our students are getting on campus, um, but also off campus. Um, at ASU, uh, we are in Phoenix. It's the fifth largest city in the country. Uh, you heard a little bit about it earlier tonight already, but um, it is the state capital. All the Fortune 500 companies in Arizona are in the Phoenix area. Um, we have a booming tech sector, all the major sports teams, the arts and the culture that's there. Uh, you will, should never be bored uh, off campus at ASU. There's so much to do in the big city of Phoenix, but then you also have the real world resume building opportunities as well. Uh, and you've heard this again tonight from our, my Arizona counterparts, but you're also gonna have some beautiful winter school year weather. Uh, if you're tired of snow in April and May, uh, or perhaps December through January, whatever it might be, uh, you're gonna have gorgeous weather during the school year at ASU. Um, a few of our rankings that we're especially proud of are on this sheet. It's kind of a bragging slide. Uh, but the one I really want to point out is the number one in the U.S. for innovation. Um, this is six years in a row that ASU has been number one ahead of some very strong competition like MIT and Stanford. Uh, this ranking is really tied directly to the college experience, uh, your experience throughout your four years from the uh, curriculum, the technology, the faculty, the research. Uh, that's what this ranking is all about. Um, and ASU uh, has been putting that first um, and getting our student experience um, uh, obviously quite uh, quite high on those lists um, and with our innovation ranking um, for some time now. So uh, just know, uh, great program, uh, a lot of other great rankings as well. Not everything is a top 10 or top 25 ranked uh, program, but across our 350 majors uh, from business and engineering uh, to photography and the fine arts, uh, you will find a lot of those uh, top ranked programs, uh, which is awesome for our students. Um, I don't have time to tell you all about this now, but know that ASU has four campuses in the Phoenix metro area. Uh, so your experience could vary uh, a little bit depending on what you want to study at ASU. Uh, Tempe our Tempe campus is our biggest campus um, and our West campus is our smallest campus. The difference can be about 50,000 all the way down to about 5,000 students. Um, so you could be at the biggest school in the country, but have a small, almost private liberal arts school experience depending on what major uh, you would like to study at ASU. Uh, and I'll put a link in the chat uh, about our campuses so you can learn more about those uh, afterwards as well. Again, I mentioned our organizations. I don't have time to tell you all about them now, but I do want to really quick uh, stress that Barrett, our, Barrett the Honors College, which is one of the top honors colleges in the country, uh, something we are especially proud of. Um, I do see a lot of St. Louis students applying to Barrett. Uh, it is at all four campuses. Any major can be a part of the Honors College, and it is a separate competitive application process. But definitely uh, check it out um, because it is something uh, that a lot of our, our high achieving uh, students who want that community of scholars, um, uh, something they enjoy. And finally, I won't go into it all now, but you can apply starting this summer if you're a junior. Um, and I will put our admission requirements website in the chat so you can see exactly what you'd be looking at for admission, scholarships, and all of those items as well. And with that, I will turn it back over to our, our host. Thank you everyone for giving us those presentations. I'm going to start beginning the round robin questionnaire area. So the question I'm gonna have our representatives answer is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go in presentation order. So we will start with University of Oregon. Hi, yeah, um, so much advice, but the one I'll pick is definitely use your resources. And so for me, using your resource means us right here. When you are in your college search, you have your admission counselors that are part of the colleges that are here to talk to you and we're very friendly people. Um, and you also have your counselors at your high school. So really use the resources on both sides um, and learn more information about the schools that you want to go to. Grand Canyon. To piggyback on that, that's a great one too. I would say, especially if you're considering schools out of state, go and visit. I know it's been a really weird uh, last year and a half, let's call it, but the best way to see if it's a right fit is to walk that campus, be on that campus, talk to students who are there as well. We are great resources, but we're not the only people to talk to. Um, and we're not the only, you know, we clearly have drank the Kool-Aid um, of the schools that we attend, but you've gotta be on that campus and walk a day and um, those students choose to see if it really is a right fit for you. Northern Arizona. 
that's all great advice. Um, and I'm making notes of what, <laughs> what everyone has said. Um, I would say also stay organized. Um, there are so many colleges and universities across the nation. Um, you're not, you're, you're not just limited to staying near, near your home. Um, so make a list of what's important. If weather is the most important, great. Have, have that as a checklist. So you know what schools to apply for and what what you don't want to apply for. Um, because uh, like has, it has been said, finding that right fit is so important. Um, so making sure that you are determining what you want um, in your experience um, and making sure that university can provide that for you is really important. University of Arizona. Yeah, great advice. I would also just add um, to compare different options. Um, even if you think you're dead set on a, this is where I wanna go, I've always wanted to go there. Um, maybe you should explore and see what else is out there. Compare big with small, um, private with public, uh, in-state versus out of state, West Coast, East Coast, just compare all the options. You never know where you're gonna find your home um, and just explore, see what else is out there. And Arizona State. Yeah, I would say uh, utilize your resources uh, and the experts. Um, it can be really tempting to, I think, as you're learning about colleges and searching, you might just hear from a friend or hear family members talking about, oh, this is this way at one school or, oh, this school does it this way. That information um, could be outdated or it could be incorrect. Um, you just never know. Um, so you want to check with the experts, uh, check with your admission counselors, utilize your high school and college counselors. Uh, we are the experts on our institutions. Your counselors will know a lot about everything. Our websites are great resources. Uh, utilize those, those sources of information that you know are going to be accurate uh, and up to date um, on all information. Thank you everyone for that wonderful advice. We do have time for just one more question. So I will do, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we'll start again with the University of Oregon. Yeah, I think I'm gonna kind of go the theme I was talking about with sports during uh, my presentation. It's just, um, I really love walking over to Austin Stadium. So again, we're really big on sports at the University of Oregon. A lot of times when we walk over the duck, our mascot will walk with us. And just like the energy walking from one end across that bridge to the stadium, um, even with our, our track and field, we host Olympic trials, all of our games, the energy just heading to the games, is just really, really big. And that's one of my favorite parts. Um, um, outside of the classroom activities. Grand Canyon? Um, yes, we would, I would say that too. We're an antelope, so not a duck, but Olivia, that's really great. I would say one of the coolest traditions and my favorite ones is Welcome Week on campus. So we invite all of our incoming class to come to campus early. Um, for, to really move in and make the campus their own. And it's really great, you get a move in time, students are there to help, we write your name on a car if you're, if you're showing up, um, everybody's saying hello, it's like a big party. They actually unpack your car for you into big crates and take everything up for you, which is kind of amazing. Um, and it just you know, it lends to the excitement of what's about to come because you're being welcomed by students who are already attending. Um, and it really gets parents excited, a little bit easier for them to say goodbye. Um, fewer tears that way, uh, maybe some more tears of happiness from the students um, that way. Um, but it is really neat. It's a really great moving experience. Northern Arizona. So I would say my favorite tradition is actually one of our newer traditions. It's about 10 years old, um, but it's called running of the freshmen. So we invite all of our first year students or freshmen to the um, NAU Sky Dome, which is where we play all of our football games. And we have the students run out on the field before the football team. Um, it's before the first football game. So it's a great way to kind of um, start the new school year, but then also the football season. Um, and I was not an athlete. So that was really my only time running across the football field with the exception of graduation. Um, and it's a really fun to participate, but then also really fun to watch. Um, and we actually also do our running of the seniors. So at the last home football game of your senior year, you can do the same thing, run across the field. So it's a great way to both start and end your time as a lumberjack. University of Arizona. So one of my favorite events on campus um, is Spring Fling. So every spring, the University of Arizona, our students run the largest student run carnival in the nation um, on our campus. So it's a really good time. It's a big festival, um, different vendors, different venues, big um, 
like uh, carnival games and carnival rides come on our campus. And so it's a really fun time for our students to get that experience, but also um, for the surrounding Tucson community and even past that. So if you're looking for a really good time, Spring Fling in Tucson. And Arizona State. Um, my favorite event uh, and tradition is, is both. Um, it's called Lantern Walk. Uh, it takes place, it's an event that takes place um, during our homecoming weekend. Uh, it's the night before the big football game on Saturday, um, and it's it's a Friday night. Uh, everyone hikes up, uh, students, faculty, staff, alumni, everyone kind of comes together and hikes up a mountain where our big gold A is kind of um, on the edge of campus. Everyone hikes up a mountain with a lantern, lights up the entire hill so everyone can see it. They announce homecoming royalty, uh, you sing the fight song, um, a lot of other kind of cheesy tradition, like ASU type stuff, um, but it's a really great experience and um, really just kind of brings everyone together the night before the big game. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.